Hello! We are now back with a very special Housemark Developers Let's Play and we are actually here with Tommy. Uh, you are one of the Resogun developers as we have previously discussed. And uh, the game that we're going to be playing today is special on many different levels because not only is it the first out of the Stardust franchise, it is also the first made by a lot of people in this company, uh, which was under a name Bloodhouse in 1993, that then merged with Terramark uh, to become uh, Housemark. So, apparently you have played this game before. Uh, yes, I have. Can you tell us a bit about the roots, if it's, uh, if it's uh, originally, you know, got an influence from somewhere, or...? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I guess the <clears throat> most obvious influence is the uh, asteroids. Asteroids. Yeah. And uh, uh, if you have seen the PS3 version of the Super Stardust, or as uh, you call it, Super Stardust HD. Uh, yes. Uh, it's uh, this, this one is a bit closer to the original uh, Asteroids. It's not a twin-stick shooter. Instead, you rotate a ship and uh, you have this... Uh, uh, 2D wraparound screen. Exactly. So we're still in space. We're still shooting asteroids like in a, a game that might sound something like that. And then we're also uh, pretty far away from the 3D sphere that we've all come to know and love uh, with the PlayStation iterations of the series. Right. So this is of course prior to any Super, because Super uh, was then added in 94 and right. then uh, there's also an, a 96 edition and then uh, after that I think uh, there might have been some variations but basically after that there's a long pause and then in uh, 2000 and uh, seven maybe I don't know <laughs> yes 2007 when we had uh, Super Stardust HD for the PlayStation 3 uh, there was sort of the first next generation or the next uh, decade continuation of the series. But let's get into the game and see how it plays out. Right. <clears throat> so we're playing this on an, an emulated uh, Amiga 500, uh, so uh, I'm actually using a keyboard uh, for playing, which uh, kind of actually makes things a bit easier because uh, there are <clears throat> Well, if, if you play with the joystick, uh, you still have some keyboard uh, controls, keyboard only uh, controls, and right. uh, um, it's easier to reach all the different buttons when <laughs> when, when the uh, joystick is mapped to the keyboard. So exactly, uh, I hope uh, you can forgive me. The, this, I think that's uh, this, fine. Uh, small amount of cheating. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll allow some cheating here. Yeah, and it's uh, uh, it's it's not it's a pretty difficult game to begin with. So. This is an awesome looking menu. Uh, Indeed. Do you have anything, like, why is it's maybe according to the restrictions of that day, but then again, there's a very much a, a certain kind of a hand drawn graphical style that we have here. Right, yeah. We, we should have uh, asked the guys exact the reasoning behind this uh, style choice, but mm. uh, then again, let's just call it retro for now, and that's a good, good way of dealing with that. Yeah. Again, these games back then were not as commercially viable as they are now, even though we were selling them, uh, there was a much different audience uh, with the Amiga 500. So not everything had to be uh, something that would sell much, but this is uh, also a visual style that we can see in a lot of games of that era, especially with 2D elements being crumpled like the paper there. It's mm -hmm. something that, uh, you know, you couldn't do 3D, so you did some uh, shadows with, uh, with, uh, with 2D graphics like that. Right. But let's let's go on. Let's yeah. try the levels. One of the key things you uh, learn while uh, if you play this game a lot is uh, a good order in which you complete the levels. Uh, well, one key thing is that uh, oh boy, uh, <laughs> that's all right. uh, sp that's speaking all right. and uh, playing uh, it, it's, playing it's it sometimes a difficult task. Surprisingly challenging, yeah. But there's, there's a strategy that goes into playing that uh, you learn and, uh, you know, picking up the superpowers and uh, 
all these uh, floating things here it has a big impact. So you're changing your weapons. Right. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> one thing that you want to make sure when you uh, play uh, play this game is uh, uh, you f uh, first choose a level which gives you the new weapon type. Right, exactly. S so that you can start uh, upgrading the weapon as soon as possible. And also, you could see that this previous menu that we were in, right. uh, you could yeah. choose your weapons from here. Yeah, you can you, you can choose which weapon you actually uh, use for shooting and uh, which weapon you use for upgrading. Exactly. So, uh, in, in this case, uh, the... The first weapon, the three-way uh, weapon, is fully upgraded, so I can uh, use the upcoming the weapon power-ups for this bouncer. Ab absolutely. Yeah. And um, of, of course, that's adding a level of uh, strategy to the game itself. Right. Also, um, so level clear, bonus count, uh, very actually similar to some of the... Uh, to me, this looks a bit like even Resogun right. Uh, right now, so <laughs> yeah. there's some similarities still there. Uh, down to the nitty-gritty, it's all about gameplay and uh, menus and everything like that. As long as it's usable, uh, the graphical style is uh, will go with some classic sci-fi type stuff. So, right. you know, it's not that we're not concerned, it's that we have a lot of values within the, within the old that we respect. So there, I think therein lies a lot of our design decisions also. Um, here, you know, I heard some talk about these asteroids, of course, not being 3D, but uh, having uh, the sort of a, a loop that uh, make them, makes them appear 3D. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then also, uh, there's a section in this game that we'll probably see soon that has uh, some really, really pseudo 3D faking in it. So we'll, we'll get to see something that was... Uh, really out of place back in 1993 and uh, very unique and very demo scene uh, of an effect that really just brought out the game I think in a lot of hobbyists vision as oh these guys have done something revolutionary here when actually you guys and uh, everybody developing the game were more about um, just tricking the, the visual uh, thing to look like it's 3D rather than making actually something 3D Right. But uh, one thing I needed to mention from this is that we are playing on an emulator and uh, we do hold the original game so we have the, the original copy of the game and not only that we did make the game so therefore we don't see that we're breaking any, any copyright restrictions by using this emulator to play the game. Uh, just if anybody's there worried about the legalities of the side, I think that we're alright since we do own the, on the rights of the game. So. We should be on the safe side. Right. Yeah, and of course the the emulator is uh, uh, open. Uh, free, free, uh, free software, so. Even that side, exactly. But yeah, so if you look at this uh, game, how does that sort of reflect Housemark history? Because we're still effectively making the same series. Over 20 years, uh, you know, Stardust has been one of the uh, franchises that we're known for it's always been a niche franchise and it's always been sort of this iteration on uh, what asteroids uh, is uh, taking it to the next level but now that uh, super stardust ultra which is actually developed by another studio than us uh, is now coming to the ps4 it's sort of culminating uh, that 20 years of history from this to the playstation 4 which is which is quite a leap so, how do you see that? Is it something that we should cherish, or, or are we stuck in our ways, or <laughs> how would you see that? I don't know, I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting how, uh, how long this uh, series has lasted. And, uh, um, you know, I think yeah. there's always an, uh, there's a calling, there's a, there's a need for certain pure gameplay experiences, and I think that this series answers to that, and it's it's very refined. So, of course, that anybody who's played a lot of Stardust knows that it's it's a game that it's it's all about gameplay, understanding the the mechanics, and then uh, exploiting them to the fullest, and getting the highest scores. So there's that arcade uh, looping that uh, people get used to, and it's it's something that not a lot of games. Well, there's a there's a lot of games 
that are considered indie and niche that do that still, but it, it hasn't been that popular all across the 20 years. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's a great honor, of course, for us to have still that uh, sort of structure alive uh, going through our, our, our veins, even this arcade spirit. So it, it's, it's something that we should definitely keep in mind that, you know, started from this and uh, now basically the same game is on PS4. Right. Kind of. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're getting uh, to the part where we have passed the few levels uh, in, in the first sector, if you will. Yeah. And now we get to see the first boss. And, uh, uh, yeah, okay. And uh, it it's probably a, uh, it's a difficult has boss. A, not very, but it's good to have some shield. Oh, yeah. Oh, before you start fighting with this boss. Does this remind you of any bosses in any other games? That well, uh, I uh, uh, I guess this is kind of the earliest version of the. Well, you have see, uh, seen some uh, something quite similar in the uh, Super Stardust. Uh, uh, exactly. Uh, uh, as well as the. Um, Even slightly uh, in Resident. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I think. Uh, so, something quite similar was in the, in the Super Stardust HD as well. Yes. Yeah. Can you tell me about the buttons now? You're moving around, so you right. clearly have this inertia yeah. that, that's, that's there, which is not in uh, some of the newer Stardust games, but right. uh, it's also in Asteroids. Uh, and then you're shooting. Um, right. And what, what, what other buttons do we have there? Yeah, well... Uh, uh, I press up for uh, thrust uh, and uh, uh, left to rotate counterclockwise and uh, right to rotate uh, clockwise. And uh, <coughs> also, uh, when I press down, I enable the shield. Right. Yeah. Well, so well, you can actively enable the shield and therefore yes. uh, you can strategically place yourself next to the boss and then dodge on, on cue. Right. That's yeah. a very, very well, important uh, gameplay factor in this game. Right. Well, one thing that's interesting with, uh, uh, with the uh, controls is that... Uh, wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's not go to the warp yet. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that um, uh, this is, in fact, a uh, joystick control, so you can't uh, um, press... Uh, well, you can't steer uh, up and down at the same time. Right. So you either accelerate or you use the shield. And uh, since uh, since be, uh, since you basically penetrate uh, any enemies uh, if you use the shield, uh, you might get uh, stuck inside <laughs> some some uh, certain some, types some, of enemies. Yeah, some enemies. And on top of that, you have one shooting button, and right. then you have the, the the menu button to go change your weapons and all that. Right. There's the loading screen still, so exactly. Uh, so But we have now, some time to <laughs> now we're talk. now we're about to get into this. And there's a there's a loading screen, and we're gonna warp to another sector of the galaxy, and uh, meteors and minefields, and uh, basically this is now we're looking into sort of a mini game, but right. uh, sort of uh, one of the most mind blowing factors of this game. Not mind blowing by modern standards, but mind blowing by by '93 standards, Amiga standards. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, well, the the original machine has like a, a seven seven point one four megahertz uh, processor, and uh, but uh, so, some some uh, special processing units uh, to <clears throat> to help with uh, exactly. cer certain graphics effects. But uh, and here, um, yeah. as you may see, the tunnel appears three D, and uh, one of the reasons for that is that when you're moving your ship. The, the tunnel also moves uh, at the screen, so it makes you makes it look like you're you're sort of inverting, or the camera is, is following your uh, your ship in a way, right. like kind of a, like an over the shoulder view. Uh, that's one of the things that was very very new at this time. So the guys who were here in Finland as part of the demo scene uh, really thought about uh, how to visually fake this sort of a view. And uh, even as the things are coming at you, uh, you know the the size of the uh, the sprites and everything. They're multiplying in, in a way that it looks like they're growing when they come at you. Right. And if you uh, 
if you play if you pay close attention to um, to the objects flying towards you you can actually uh, see that uh, the the rotation of those uh, objects is like fixed every every object uh, rotates the same way but uh, it's uh, it's a really uh, subtle detail that you don't exactly really pay that much attention to and it. and hence you don't pay that much attention everything looks like this traveling to you in 3d oh right. and now we have some particle effects <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so this is very much like uh, the ending of a level in Resogun. Uh, you yeah. get some fireworks uh, these are not, of course, voxels, but this is, again, a demonstration of the demo scene of that time, making cool things happen and making it look a bit like the trajectories there could have physics enabled or something like that. So again, uh, very close to the stuff that we to do today, but on very, very different hardware. Right. Exactly. So, um, this, to me, could conclude the look into Housemark's history and also uh, should open up a little bit about why we are what we are today. And uh, it's, it's really wonderful to see that these games uh, have an existence and there's, there's people who still cherish them and uh, we can draw to direct bridges from, from what it was in 93 to what it is now. Housemark, of course, uh, was started in 95, so next year, 2015, will be our 20th anniversary. So this is sort of a preview into us telling uh, you guys a bit more about how we got here, what that journey has been like, and uh, why we cherish the things that we do. So I'd like to thank you at this point. We can do more of this later on, <laughs> but, but for now, this is uh, the sneak peek, a look at the Stardust original in 93. Uh, thank you, Tommy. Uh, for for giving us this opportunity to show a bit more about the history of Housemark. Oh, All right, thank you. We'll be back with more next time.